I created a monster. Look at the cooldown reduction on the golem ability. It's pretty much spammable and instant. Not only that, we fixed the biggest problem of the golem necro and that was having the shadow blight key passive permanently up by boosting our skeleton mages and warriors to instant stack it. Now, before we get to the changes and how everything works right now, I'd like to kind of show you that it actually works by blasting through a tier 90 pit in a quick three minutes while talking about the rotations you do with the build. The highest pit without Holy Bolt Elixir so far was 113. Problem is my rings are plenty bad currently. Yes, they're horrible. And I need to finish masterworking this chest to get some more damage. For pushing through 90s, I like to take momentum. Now, before you ask, why not farm 100s over 90s? Because I can do more 90s per hour. Actually that simple. Now you just blood mist in, pull everything together. Then your golem just smashes them, pull everything together again, golem smash, and on we go. The bonus movement speed with Blood Mist helps tremendously to literally just cover every room really quick and always try to pull as many together as you can. Because if you have all of them like nicely stacked up, your golem has a better chance for cooldown reduction. And the more elites you have stacked up, the better the cooldown reduction anyways because everything else just mostly dies with one golem ability. There it is straight up again, and everything is actually dead because your golem has a million damage potential plus. So if you're now able to trigger him two times in a row, even even if it goes bad, even if you're not, you know, hitting high, uh, you're most likely just already tearing everything into pieces. Let's go both rooms, hold together. Don't forget to raise your corpses in between. And yes, right now the golem on hit reduces his cooldown nicely. And the more enemies he hits at the same time, the better he reduces the cooldown. We'll get to that in the aspect section. Can I die? Yes, I might have 40,000 life, but I can still die. There's a version that we'll talk about at the end of the video with Bonestorm that essentially is undying with a caveat of doing less damage. Now, if you're though farming for material, it might be more convenient sometimes to just play the version that can't die because, well, you're essentially trying to like get as fast through. Oh, there's nothing more here. Oops. <laughs> Hate that when you end up in a dead end. Um, it might be more convenient to play the version that simply can't die because, well, what what what, what keeps you from progressing fa further, faster? Death. It's a lot of minions. I love that. It's what we want to have. And there's the golem straight up active again. Notice that that cooldown reduction from the beginning was in a higher pit. That was pit 120 that we're planning to push through because I won't sleep before we are able to essentially do pit 120 plus without the Holy Bolt Elixir because that would be fantastic to pull off. But for that, we still need some upgrades down the line. We get all these pulled together, pesky vampires. Summon your corpses. Again, try to get that Flash Eater node always up. Now, I wanted to say, look how my Shadow Blight is always up, but you couldn't see it because it was just hidden behind everything else, right? And we're looking at three minute to boss, roughly, and then we look at a 30 second boss fight because that's the thing. The, the actual going through the pit at this level is taking longer than the boss fight itself. Yeah. I like the boss fights later on, like when we're talking about 110 and so on. You're looking for minutes and minutes of fighting the boss. And when we're looking at boss fights here, despite them having like quite quite the formidable HP, don't get me wrong, they're they're actually tanky and sturdy. But yeah, your your golem is just your golem is just something, you know? Uh, there we go. Now heal up. And for the boss fight, oh that's the worst one. <laughs> I think Reddit hates him. You do your thingy trigger the golem avoid getting hit wait in the same position where you actually were because then he often comes back trigger your aura again now go for the full damage boost and that's half of his hp gone <laughs> in two golem hits that was just him right done done gg was that ring any good if I had attack speed instead of the end, I would be happy. 
Now, what's the big thing we changed to make this happen? And that is we're playing the hulking aspect again. Now it gives you only a 12% chance to reduce the cooldown of the golem by two seconds and a 6% chance to form corpses. The corpses is uninteresting. It does give you some bonus fortify and the initial corpse to actually corpse tender often. But the 12% is more interesting, especially when there is masses of mobs because it says 12% chance to reduce the cooldown each time it damages an enemy with its normal attack. But if it damages five to 10 enemies with a normal attack because it has a standard cleave and that's five to 10 times 12% chance to reduce the cooldown, which sometimes leads into instant 10 second cooldown reductions and boom, you can actually chain the ability in a row. This gets followed up by the aphotic aspect. And yes, the aphotic aspect is able to stack the shadow blight key passive. It makes your skeletal warriors be shadow too. And on top, it does a bonus stun to get your opponent staggered faster. Important on this glove would be skeletal mage mastery, critical strike chance and damage, golem damage and corpse tendril size. This gets followed up with a new weapon tempering, which goes beyond anything you've seen before. Because right now we're tempering skeletal mage attacks to cast twice. What? Yes, we get maximum life, crit damage, intelligence, golem damage, and then our mages cast twice. Why don't we have minion attack speed, huh? Everyone has that. We also do have the 240% for the Shadow Blight key passive. The reason we don't have minion attack speed is because of our ranks. This is 16.6 .6 attack speed, plus ultimate cooldown reduction and golem damage. Golem cooldown reduction would actually be better, but a little bit ultimate doesn't hurt. My ring is bad because I don't have crit damage and crit chance on it. The max life and int is nice, the max life you might keep, but I need the critical strike damage to really have my golem go as high as possible. Same goes for this ring. It does have the attack speed and the 30% golem active cooldown reduction, which is quite amazing because damage 30%. But again, critical strike damage would be preferred over intelligence because it just multiplies more. Now with this 16 and 16%, we're looking in total at 32.9% attack speed on myself and 10% minion attack speed. With the amulet having frenzy debt of 68%, we're right at the 100% attack speed cap. Plus over the Paragon board we'll go over in a bit, Golem has even more attack speed because we changed something in the Paragon board to make him faster. Help and commander is absolutely needed. And just as an advice for getting your help and commander, you literally have to Obel Gamble amulets until you get this. But if you do want to roll for help and commander, just one advice, never try to reroll maximum life or life on hit into a skill. What works better is rerolling a skill into a skill. So I've noticed this, there's a weight happening on skills and it's super stupid. But if I would reroll this amulet with two ranks in Death Embrace, and I would reroll the Death Embrace into another Hellbang Commander, that works better than trying to reroll any of the other stats. Don't ask me why that is, it is just what it is. The goal would be to get the frenzied bat dead of the amulet by getting attack speed either on the amulet instead of max life or crit chance, probably instead of max life, or getting attack speed on your gloves, because then we could move the frenzy dead over to our rings and put the aspect of reanimation that is on the ring on the amulet for another 20% bonus damage. The second ring is currently boasting Army of the Dead. That is just a way too good damage boost. Why are we not playing Bone Storm? Because Army of the Dead makes my minions undying, no matter what pit tier we're going for. The helmet is playing Hard and Boned and Blood Mist duration, which allows me to stay a little bit longer in Blood Mist with a cooldown reduction, max life, and scale to Warrior Mastery. Do you need the scale to Warrior Mastery? No, but having it essentially increases your DPS net total. Usually you would want to have scale to Mage Mastery on the pants, but currently for the Paragon board I'm running, I'm forced to go to Resistance to All Elements with this pants, since otherwise I wouldn't be reaching my caps. We're also playing the Blood Mist triggers Corpse Explosion on surrounding corpses for the Blood Mist, because with the Blood Mist now, the scale to Mages to cast twice, the Shadow Blight stacks faster than ever. We don't need the bonus attack speed anymore. That means we can hire our DPS again by just giving the mages the chance to hit two attacks in a row. Why wouldn't we? More attacks in a row, more Shadow Blight key passive, more Shadow Blight key passive, more 240% damage multiplier. Simple as that. Take walk. Lastly, the boots are having scale to warrior mastery as well. More DPS with a blood mist movement speed and that just makes you go as fast as F. Quite crazy, super fun. Book of the Dead has a very important change. If you're not doing this, you're doing it wrong. Scale to Warriors are Reapers. You currently can play these Reapers for the cooldown reduction and the corpses, or these Reapers just for the cooldown reduction. It's a stupid bug. Don't get used to it. You would be better off going for the standard cooldown reduction because that's actually what you want, and that's what the Hulking is helping with even more corpses. And the Scale to Mages need to be the bonus damage mages. If you're going for the bonus attack mages, useless. Why is the bonus attack mages useless? The more DPS is neglectable, and the bonus throw every third attack doesn't 
really matter when stacking Shadow Blight. Now you're going to be confused why we go for the bonus attack then still. Because that's a 60% chance and that on net total triggers more often than actually the third attack in the window of getting Shadow Blight up. And with the 15% bonus damage that you're getting, your Golem is just doing so much more damage. And not only your Golem, everyone is doing more damage. And lastly, the Blood Golem, and I've seen a lot of people be confused, why not the Iron Golem for the Super Slam? It's simple. The Blood Golem is getting triple damage versus one target. You know this by hovering over the Golem itself, and it says damage and healing received is tripled if only one enemy is drained. And that gives the ability, the chance to do these billions and two, three, four billions of damage without Holy Bolt. For the skill tree, two things to think about. First, you could actually leave the Blood Mist Leaf's Corpse behind over to a 10% bonus critical strike damage, which boosts everyone by 10% critical strike as you have Blood Mist more or less always up and you always use it every four seconds, kinda. The bonus corp is nice to have, but usually against boss fights, you have enough corpses because your Golem now also produces them. We do play Spiked Armor and it's kinda a must. It gives a bit more Thorns damage, but more important, I do need the 15% additional armor. And yes, you could go for the bonus movement speed, but let's be real. What do you really need in the pin? And that is Death Embrace for the damage reduction. To just make sure that they're not killing you while they're a little bit too close. It gives your mages the chance to get boosted by the shadow damage. And now we have eight ranks in Golem Mastery for the 200% plus. Mages are currently at seven ranks, but we could get plus four from our pans, bring that up to 11 ranks. And then we have plus 12 on Warrior Mastery. So our DPS is in total higher. And since they're all having more crit, kind of works out very nice. And this is definitely why you need Hellbank Commander, because then it's another 105% multiplier on top of the 200% multiplier, for example, or the 140% multiplier, plus the things that come from the Paragon board. Because the Paragon board changed a lot, especially the Golem board. We're beginning here with the Exploit Glyph or the Territorial, because both Exploit and Territorial are able to get very easy dexterity down. This is probably the lowest point investment you can just go through and still activate a Glyph. That goes straight into the Bone Graph board and mostly because we want the maximum life to be at this 40,000 life to make us tanky enough. Together with the Exploit Glyph, so exploit and territorial. Again, it's so few points to just zoom through here. If you go for an intelligence board, it mostly costs a little bit too much to invest. Then we're going into the cult leader with the debt razor and have the minion attack speed activated. Very important. These two are not worth it. It's a bit more DPS, but ah, eh? rather have the golem DPS up. And here our goal was to activate this as convenient as possible. So we're going in from the bottom to straight up activate the Amplify Glyph. And you can see that we can activate the Amplify Glyph without going anywhere off the charts. Advantage is 150% bonus to all magic nodes, which gives us Golem, Golem, and Golem damage. In total, another 40% Golem damage like this. And now as we're going out on the right side, we managed to pick up the Frenzied Golem node for bonus attack speed, attack speed, attack speed, and damage, damage, and damage. Where we're then going out on the right side for the Send of Death, together with another 47 points in Golem for another 200% damage. Here is bonus armor while Golem is active. That's kind of fantastic. If you manage to get a nasty armor roll on your gear, you might be able to drop these for more damage while Golem is active. Doesn't hurt. Now over to the Bloodbath board for 39 points in dexterity for critical strike damage. If you manage to weasel out another two points, for example, these two points, then you could be getting another 20% critical strike damage bonus. Lastly, the Flash Eater board to actually go for the resistance to all elements bonus, damage to elites, and we kind of are forced to take this else we wouldn't resistance out. Now a word about Bonestorm and is it worth it because you see a lot of builds proposing to play Bonestorm. It is making the build safer but do less damage. It is quite fun to do if you start to do higher pits 120 plus. It feels very bad to play without Army of the Dead because your minions will just constantly die no matter what you do and you're going to be busy resummoning your minions and that feels shitty because they need to be alive for 10 seconds to actually get the bonus of reanimation and they need to do some attacks to get the frenzied dead bonus. Therefore, going then for not Army of the Dead, together with a 90% damage reduction, can feel very iffy in certain situations. Now again, for speed farming and rushing through, the Bone Storm can absolutely feel amazing. You're essentially just replacing Army of the Dead through Bone Storm, and then your unyielding commander through Ultimate Shadows, and drop the hulking aspect for Shielding Storm. 
boom. You have a build that can zoom through with permanent barrier without ever taking a single point of damage. And then you can just speed farm your 90s for material. Might be actually worth it if you just want to farm for materials right now and not push deeper into the pin. Now, if you do want to see how a 110 looks with the old version that was actually worse than this, there you go. There's the 110. But don't worry, we'll push deeper into the pit with this one as well, or rather a bone spirit build that can do up to 250 million damage. I won't sleep before I got that 500 million super whammer. Enjoy. Thank you for watching.